Welcome back! We are now on the third week of our lesson in bread and pastry production. Our lesson is about accurate ways of measuring dry and liquid ingredients. For the learning objectives, at the end of the learning period, you should be able to identify the accurate ways of measuring dry and liquid ingredients, classify dry and liquid ingredients, and recognize the importance of measuring dry and liquid ingredients accurately. To check what you already know about our lesson, please do the pretest. Read the questions carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Pause the video when answering and play the video when you're done. Number 1. What ingredient is packed when measuring and follows the shape of the cup when inverted? A. Brown sugar B. Flour or C. White sugar It's A. Brown sugar Number 2. What tool is used to measure large amount of liquid ingredients? A. Measuring spoons B. Measuring glass or C. Measuring cups it's B, measuring glass. For number 3, what tool is used to level off ingredients when measuring? A, finger, B, spoon, or C, spatula? It's letter C, spatula. Number 4, what needs to be removed to brown sugar before measuring? A, air, B, lumps, or C, moist? It's B, lumps. Number 5. What is applied to measuring cups before measuring honey? A, sugar, B, oil, or C, water? It's B, oil. Number 6. What do you need to do before measuring flour? A, sift, B, top, or C, level up? It's letter A, sift. 7. How to remove lumps in powdered ingredients like baking soda? A. Steer, B. Top, or C. Level off. It's A. Steer. Number 8. What is used to level off ingredients in the absence of spatula? A. Spoon, B. Back of a knife, or C. Finger? It's letter B. Back of a knife. Number 9. Where should the measuring glass be placed when measuring liquid ingredients? A. Hold with hands B. On a flat surface or C. Weighing scale It's B. On a flat surface And last, what step is not necessary to powdered sugar unless it's lumpy? A. Sifting B. Measuring or C. Weighing It's A. Sifting Let's have a recap or review of your previous lesson. Convert the given temperatures. Use the simplified formula and show your solutions. Pause the video while converting and play the video when you're done. Let's have Celsius to Fahrenheit. The first given is 50 degrees Celsius is equal to how many degrees Fahrenheit? You will be using 5F is equal to 9C plus 160C for your formula. Pause the video and solve for the given, and play the video when you're done. Now let's plug in the given to our formula. That will give us 5F is equal to 9 times 50 plus 160. 9 times 50 is equal to 450 plus 160. It will give us 610. Divided by 5, cancel. The answer is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Please solve number 2. 190 degrees Celsius is equal to how many degrees Fahrenheit? Pause the video and play the video when you already have your solutions. Now let's have our formula. 5F is equal to 9 times 190 plus 160. That will give us 1,710 plus 160 and it will give us 1,870 divided by 5. Cancel. The answer is 
374 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's have the last given for Celsius to Fahrenheit. We have 280 degrees Celsius is equal to how many degrees Fahrenheit? Pause the video and solve for the given and play the video when you already have your solutions. Now let's have the solutions. 5F is equal to 9 times 280 plus 160. It will give us 2520 plus 160. Then 2680 divided by 5. Cancel. The answer will be 536 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's have Fahrenheit to Celsius. Our formula will be 9C is equal to 5F minus 160. The first given will be 230 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to how many degrees Celsius? Pause the video and play the video when you already have your solutions. Now let's have the solutions. 9C is equal to 5 times 230 minus 160. It will give us 1,150 minus 160. It will give us 990 divided by 9. Cancel. The answer is 110 degrees Celsius. Next, let's have 392 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to how many degrees Celsius? Pause the video and solve for the given. Play the video when you already have your solutions. Now let's plug in the given to our formula. 9C is equal to 5 times 392 minus 160. 9C is equal to 1960 minus 160. That will give us 9C is equal to 1800 divided by 9. Cancel. The answer is 200 degrees Celsius. Now let's have the last item. 500 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to how many degrees Celsius? You know the drill. Now let's have the solutions. 9C is equal to 5 times 500 minus 160. It will give us 2500 minus 160. Then it will give us 2340. Let's divide that by 9. Cancel. The answer will be 260 degrees Celsius. Great job on the recap. Now let's have our lesson. Today, we will talk about accurate ways of measuring dry and liquid ingredients. We all know that measuring ingredients is very important in baking. It will affect the outcome of your baked products. Before you learn how to measure ingredients accurately, you have to know that there are two types of ingredients, the dry ingredients and the liquid ingredients. Under the dry ingredients, we have the flour, like all-purpose flour, and cornstarch. We also have sugar, like white sugar and brown sugar. Powdered food like baking powder, baking soda, and powdered milk. We also have shortening solid fats like butter and margarine. Now for the liquid ingredients, we have water, milk like evaporated or condensed. We also have liquid fats like oil and honey. We also have tools needed in measuring dry and liquid ingredients. For dry ingredients, we have measuring cups, measuring spoons, strainer, spatula, or if the spatula is not available, you can use the back of a knife. Then for the liquid ingredients, we usually use measuring glass, measuring cups, and measuring spoons. Now it's time to show you the procedures in measuring dry and liquid ingredients. Make sure to focus so you will learn how to do it. Procedures in Measuring Dry and Liquid Ingredients Dry and Liquid Ingredients Needed Flour Brown Sugar White Sugar Baking Powder Cooking Oil Butter Milk 
and honey. Tools needed in measuring ingredients. Bowl, flour sifter, measuring glass, measuring cups, measuring spoons, pastry brush, and spatula. Procedures in measuring flour. Sift the flour to remove lumps. Fill the cup through scooping until it overflows. Level off with a spatula. Procedures in measuring white sugar. No need to sift the sugar. Scoop the sugar into the cup until it overflows. Do not shake to level off. Level off with spatula. Procedures in measuring brown sugar. Roll out the lumps before measuring. Scoop the sugar into the measuring cup. Press compactly. Level off with spatula. It should follow the shape of the measuring cup. Procedures in measuring baking powder or any powdered food. Steer to remove lumps. Scoop the powder until it overflows. Level off with spatula. Procedures in measuring oil. Place the measuring glass into a flat surface. Slowly pour the oil. Avoid lifting the cup when measuring. Bend down to eye level to check the measurement. Procedures in measuring butter or any solid fats. Fill the measuring cup while pressing down. Level off with spatula. Grease the measuring cup with oil for easy removal. Procedures in measuring milk and other liquid ingredients. Place the measuring glass into a flat surface. Slowly pour the milk into the measuring glass. Bend down to eye level to check the measurement. Procedures in measuring honey Grease the measuring cup with oil or butter. Slowly pour the honey until the measuring cup is full. And that's how we measure ingredients accurately. Remember, measurement is very important in baking. For the first part of your activity, you will classify the ingredients presented if they belong to dry or liquid ingredient. This will be the format of your activity. Pause the video while working and play the video when you're done. For the dry ingredients, the answers are sugar, flour, baking soda, margarine, butter, and baking powder. Now for the liquid ingredients, we have evaporated milk, honey, oil, juice, water, and vanilla. Now for the second part, read carefully the statement, write T if the statement is true, and F if the statement is false. Pause the video while answering and play the video when you're done. Number 1. Sift the flour before measuring to remove lumps. True. Number 2. Level off ingredients with spatula or back of a knife. 
true. Number three, always sift white sugar. False. False because white sugar is crystallized. What we sift is powdered sugar when it's lumpy. Number four, shake measuring cup to level off ingredients. False. We don't actually shake the measuring cup. We use spatula or back of a knife to level off ingredients. Number five. Brown sugar is packed compactly if it follows the shape of the measuring cup. True. Number six. Scoop baking powder until it overflows. True. Number seven. Place the measuring glass into a flat surface. Also true. Number eight. To check the measuring glass, bend down to eye level. True. Number 9. Press the fat or shortening until it's full in the measuring cup. True. And number 10. Grease cup with oil or butter when measuring honey. True as well. Very good. Let's have the wrap up. For the wrap up, we will do simili -me. Explain the statement below in relation to our lesson today. Baking is like science. Pause the video and work with your activity and play the video when you're done. Now for the valuing part, we will do phase continuum. It is important to have an accurate measurement in baking. It will give good results to the taste and texture of the product you are baking. Do you agree or disagree? Why? Now to see what you've learned today, we will do a post test. Read the questions carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Again, pause the video when answering and play the video when you're done. Number 1. What ingredient is packed when measuring and follows the shape of the cup when inverted? A. Flour B. White sugar or C. Brown sugar letter C, brown sugar. Number two, what tool is used to measure large amount of liquid ingredients? A, measuring glass, B, measuring cups, or C, measuring spoons? It's A, measuring glass. Number three, what tool is used to level off ingredients when measuring? A, spatula, B, spoon, or C, finger? Letter A, spatula. Number 4. What needs to be removed to brown sugar before measuring? A, lumps. B, air. C, moist. It's A, lumps. Number 5. What is applied to measuring cups before measuring honey? A, water. B, oil. Or C, sugar. It's B, oil. Number 6. What do you need to do before measuring flour? A. Level off B. Top C. Sift It's D. Sift How to remove lumps in powdered ingredients like baking soda? A. Top B. Steer C. Level off B. Steer Number 8. What is used to level off ingredients in the absence of spatula? A. Back of a knife B. Spoon C. Finger It's A. Back of a knife Number 9. Where should the measuring glass be placed when measuring liquid ingredients? A. Weighing scale B. On a flat surface C. Hold with hands Letter B. On a flat surface And last, what step is not necessary to powder sugar unless it's lumpy? A. Weighing, B. Sifting, or C. Measuring Letter B. Sifting You did great today. I'll see you again on the next video. Take care and God bless.